Okay, so today we will discuss one of the most important concept and one of the frequently asked questions in interview, bias, variance, and trade-off. Bias, variance, and trade-off. Now, what are these three things? Prediction error, we get error in predictions, right? We will never get a 100% accurate prediction, be it a regression problem, be it a classification problem, we will never get a 100% prediction. There will be an error. So prediction error has three components. Bias, variance, and irreducible error. Irreducible error. So prediction error typically has three components, bias, variance, and irreducible error. Now, let us first understand irreducible error. Irreducible error cannot be reduced. Irreducible error cannot be reduced regardless of what algorithm is used or which algorithm is used. Whatever may be the algorithm you're using, the error will be there. So irre irreducible error cannot be reduced regardless of which algorithm is used. This error, this error originates from wrong framing of business problem, from wrong framing of business problem, and also caused by unknown variables. So prediction error, whenever we predict, we will definitely get error, be it a regression problem, be it a classification problem. Now that error has three components, bias, variance, and irreducible error. Irreducible error is that error that cannot be reduced regardless of which algorithm is used. Whatever may be the algorithm, the error still will be there. Typically, this error is from wrong framing of the business problem. One reason, you have wrongly framed the business problem or you have wrongly understood the business problem. That is one reason. Second reason is unknown variables. COVID. Nobody ever expected COVID will come and destroy businesses like this. So there will be always unknown variables. So these irreducible error, you cannot reduce. It will be there no matter what you do. The error will still be there. Now let us understand the other component, bias. Bias are simplifying assumptions. Bias are simplifying assumptions made by an algorithm. Assumptions made by an algorithm to predict and also makes it easier for the cost function to learn effectively. Bias are simplifying assumptions made by the algorithm. So there are certain assumptions that are made by the algorithms. Those we call them as assumptions. Typically, Parametric algorithms, parametric algorithms 
applied multiple linear regression binary logistic regression have assumptions that must be met before implementing the algorithm. Before implementing the algorithm, we have to verify these assumptions. And upon these assumptions met, then only we will implement these algorithms. What are the assumptions of multiple linear regression? Why it should be numerical and continuous. What about logistic regression? Why should be non-numeric and binary? Then only we can run. So there are assumptions that need to be met, then only we can run those algorithms. That we call it as bias. That we call as bias. Parametric algorithms. Parametric algorithms have high bias. Parametric algorithms like multiple linear regression, binary logistic regression. One more algorithm is linear discriminant analysis. These type of algorithms will have high assumptions or high bias. Typically, parametric means they have assumptions. Linear algorithms have high bias and hence they run faster. They run very fast because of the high bias. They will have low predictive performance. They will have low predictive performance if assumptions are not met. If assumptions are not met, their performance will be very, very bad. You will not get the basic R square. You will not get the, you will get very high RMSE. So bias are the underlying assumptions for the algorithms that need to be met for the algorithm to function properly. If multiple linear regression algorithms assumptions are met, then their performance will be good. If the assumptions are not met, their performance will be very, very bad. We have seen in big mart cells where the dependent variable was highly skewed and has too many outliers. It even it didn't even get the basic R square. R square was 0 0.52 or something like that, right? We want R square to be 0 0.60 to 0 0.95. So that is what happens with the uh, parametric algorithms. Parametric algorithms have very, very high assumptions. Now, low bias means, low bias means few or no assumptions. You are no assumptions about dependent variable. High bias means high bias means many assumptions about dependent variable. So low bias means they have few or no assumptions. High bias means they will have very, very high assumptions. High bias ML algorithms, machine learning algorithms, high bias are multiple linear 
regression. Binary logistic regression. Low bias ML algorithms. Low bias ML algorithms. Tree based model algorithms <laughs> like decision tree, random forest, etc. Even KNN. KNN's network is also non-parametric. Yeah, GBM is also there. Gradient boosting, tree-based model. So bias is a very important concept you need to understand. Bias are the underlying assumptions that algorithms have. And if those assumptions are not met, then the algorithm performance will be very, very bad. If, their if the basic assumptions are met, then they not only run faster, their performance will also be very, very good. So that is the concept of bias. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it. First, understand bias. All right, all of you got this. Can we move forward? Okay, can we move forward, participants? Hello. Okay, so let us go with the next part of the things variance. So, variance is amount of deviation. Cost in the dependent variable, amount of variation caused in the dependent variable when there are minor to major changes in the input variables or independent variables. So variance is the amount of deviation caused in the dependent variable when there are minor to major changes in the input variables or independent variables, which is nothing but you're trying to do uh, when you run the model on test data, what is the accuracy? It will not be the same, right? It will be either less or it will be 
or high. Most of the times it will be less compared to the trained data. Compared to trained data, test data will always, most of the times will be less. Very rarely we see test data having higher accuracy or higher R square compared to the trained data. Right, that we call it as variance. So variance is amount of deviation caused in the dependent variable when there are minor to major changes in the input variables or independent variables. That we call it as variance. Now, low variance. Low variance is small or marginal changes. Small or marginal changes in the input data lead to small or marginal changes in dependent variable prediction. In dependent variable prediction. So there will be some change. There will be some change in the data which is given as test data or when you're cross-validating subsets of data will change, right? So when your variance is low means there are small or minor marginal changes in the input data. So your overall dependent variable will also have marginal change. High variance. High variance means large changes in the input data lead to large or major changes in dependent variable prediction. Large changes in the input data will lead to very big changes in the dependent variable prediction. We call it as high variance. Low variance and high variance. Because, uh, high variance means that even if there's a low change, it should cause some major uh, Yeah, that is also there. That is also there. Large changes or you can say small changes. But uh, that situation is uh, specific to algorithm like decision tree only. In decision tree, a marginal change also will lead to huge change, right? On trained data, you get 100%. If you repeatedly test, it will go to 60%, 50% like that with marginal or small changes. You are right. Large or small changes will lead to huge changes in the input data. Here also then we have to add large. Okay, so non linear algorithms and non uh, what you call non parametric algorithms are sensitive to are highly sensitive variance in input data. So if you are looking at uh, 
non parametric algorithms like decision tree decision tree does not have any uh, assumptions right random forest also doesn't have any assumptions so we call them as non parametric algorithms similarly linear algorithms deal with variance better and are less sensible So can we <coughs> hello? Yeah. So can we control variance? Controlling variance depends on the type of data you are giving. If you give the data in the same format, suppose you have done scaling on original data and build the model, you should also do scaling on the test data and then do do the same thing. So whatever you have implemented on train data. Same things must also be done on test data, then you can control the variance. Okay, sir. Look at the algorithms. So, machine learning. Uh, yeah. Yes. Try to achieve machine learning algorithms, try to achieve low bias and low variance. So the machine learning algorithms, we need to fit in such a way that there is a low bias and low variance. That is the target. So you can see here. The blue line, blue dotted line indicates variance. Uh, the gray line, olive gray line indicates bias. 
or the black dotted is training error. And the red line is your irreducible error, which always will be there. You should try to find a zone. This is the best fit model zone. If it is high bias and low variance, if it is high bias, here the bias is high, right? And uh, variance is low. This is called as underfitting zone. Underfitting is where you have high bias and low variance. Overfitting, opposite. Low bias and high variance. Overfitting zone. This diagram will clearly explain to you what is the underfitting zone and what is the overfitting zone based on the bias and variance. Okay, can we move forward? Yeah. Now, let us understand underfitting. 
he will be trained. Underfitting is where the machine learning algorithm fails to capture the underlying trend. It fails to capture the underlying trend or pattern in data. So underfitting is where the machine learning algorithm fails to learn the trends and patterns in the data. The changes or the pattern or the trends which are there in the data, it fails to learn. When it happens, the machine learning algorithm does not fit. When it happens, the machine learning algorithm does not fit and the metrics like R square or accuracy will be below minimum threshold. It will be minimum threshold. In R square it is 0 0.60, in accuracy it is 0 0.70. If the minimum level of R square is not reached, then we call it as underfitting. If the minimum level of 0 0.70 is not reached in the accuracy problems, we call it as model has underfit. That means model is not able to learn. Now, it generally happens when there is not enough data for the algorithm to learn. When there is not enough data in your sample size, generally it underfits. Big Mart says, we don't have enough data. We have too many variables. We have less amount of data. So when you use PD, get them is. When you use label encoder, data size is okay. But when you use PD, get them is, the columns go to 45, right? And we have only 8,000 observations or something, uh, not even 8,000 8, or something will be our observation. So we don't have enough sample size for the algorithm to learn. Uh, learn. Now, what are the techniques for correcting underfitting? One, increase data in terms of rows or observations or Decrease features or variables or columns. You can increase the rows or decrease the columns. That is the first strategy. Second strategy is remove noise. When I say noise, from data like skewness, outliers, etc. You have to remove the noise from the data. Deploy feature or variable selection methods. Deploy feature or variable selection methods or dimension reduction methods. Dimensional reduction methods, dimensionality reduction methods. Either do feature selection or do dimensionality reduction. <clears throat> Techniques for correcting underfitting.
जब तक डेटा इंजीनियर्स डेविड लास्कर प्रोग्रामिंग एंड क्लाउड रिलेटेड एंड ऑल सी अप्लाइंस ही ठीक है Okay. Overfitting. Overfitting is when there is drastic difference between print model performance and. test model or validated model performance huge difference between train model performance and test or validated model performance non linear algorithms like decision tree suffer from overfitting they suffer from overfitting decision tree even knn k nearest neighbor algorithm also suffer from overfitting decision tree suffers from overfitting k n n also has overfitting problems typically large scale data has overfitting problem when you deal with large scale data very very large data you will tend to see the overfitting problem very very large data lakhs 20 lakh crores 30 lakh crores data is there you will see the overfitting problem techniques for correcting so reduce data by using sampling techniques first one is you can reduce the data size by using sampling techniques sampling techniques in bed of a random sample you can take random sample of rows that is the preferred one stratified sampling like that you have random sampling you have uh judgmental sampling where you choose right so different sampling techniques are there you can use those sampling techniques and reduce the data then the most important is
Hello. Yeah, one second. Okay, okay, sir. regularization techniques you can also use regularization techniques like lasso ridge and elastic Net. And we can also do reduce model complexity by choosing simple algorithms.
So overfitting is when there is a drastic difference between train model performance and test model or validated model performance. Non-linear algorithms, typically decision tree and KNN will suffer from this uh, overfitting and large scale data also has overfitting issues. Now we can reduce the data size by sampling techniques. That is one strategy of correction. And we can use regularization techniques like lasso, ridge, and elastic net. These are algorithms, linear algorithms. These are basically linear algorithms which you can use or uh, you can reduce the model complexity. Reduce the model complexity by choosing simplifying algorithms. Max depth in, that's all. Uh, you, can, you have control mechanisms. Guys, any doubts in underfitting and overfitting? Yeah, we have to study the algorithms first, no? We'll do that. Online guys, any doubts? Okay. Now, regularization techniques. Regularization techniques, also called as penalized regression techniques, penalized regression techniques are used to tackle overfitting problem are used to tackle overfitting problem regularization techniques are also called as penalized regressions are used for tackling overfitting problems regularization Prevents overfitting by adding a penalty, by adding a penalty term also called as lambda or in Python we call it as alpha, lambda or alpha to the regression object to the regression object or coefficients of the model. Coefficients of the regression model. So for doing regularization techniques, you have to first run the normal multiple linear regression. On the regression output, these la uh, lasso region elastic net will work by adding penalties to the coefficients coefficients will be given penal assigned a penalty. So penalty can be multiples of 0 0.01. You can define your penalty. Penalty can be 0 0.05, 0 0.03, 0 0.5. You can choose any penalty you want. One or even smaller. If it is large data, it should be even smaller. Now, what this will do is the penalization will either shrink the size of coefficient or
make coefficient zero. It will either shrink, shrink means reduce the size of coefficient or it will make it zero. So basically regularization tackles overfitting either by reducing the size of coefficients or make some coefficients equal to zero. If coefficients are equal to zero, what will happen? Thereby eliminating variables or features. If coefficient is zero, that means that variable will be eliminated. So regularization has two methods. One is reducing the size. Say, let's say your coefficient is 260.8. It will make it to 30.8 or 40.8 or 5.8 like that. It will reduce the, or it will shrink the coefficient size. Or it will make the coefficient zero. If it makes coefficient zero, that means the variable will be eliminated from the model. So regularization tackles overfitting in this manner. Okay. Okay, guys, any doubts? Okay. <clears throat> the first algorithm is lasso. Lasso means least absolute least absolute shrinkage and selection operator least absolute shrinkage and selection operator also called as l1 norm or l1 penalty also called as L1 norm or L1 penalty. Lasso means least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. Lasso adds a penalty. Lambda to absolute coefficients of regression model. Absolute coefficients of regression model. Lasso will definitely make some coefficients zero, thereby reducing the number of variables 
thereby reducing the and also works as variable or feature selection method so it is used in variable selection or feature selection method lasso can be used decision tree also has that uh, feature selection right you get important features get features which are important feature importances decision tree tree models also are variable selections lasso is also a variable selection method because it will eliminate some variables right by making them zero it will definitely make some variables zero thereby reducing the number variables so if you give x variables you will get x minus as output that means you can use it as feature selection or variable selection method lasso does not work well with multi collinear data lasso does not work well with multi collinear data lasso does not work well with multi collinear data so you should use it on data that does not have multi collinearity or you should remove multi collinearity then use lasso if there is multi collinearity lasso does not work well so the objective here is regression some square model plus lambda into absolute value of coefficients so when i say absolute value what i am saying here that means you will ignore the mathematical sign some of the coefficients will be negative some of the coefficients will be positive right in regression equation in regression equation some of the coefficients will be positive some of them will be negative so when i say absolute i it means that it will ignore the mathematical sign absolute means it will ignore the mathematical sign it will not take into the negative into consideration it will just take it as a number value if lambda is equal to 0 if you are giving lambda is equal to 0 all coefficients remain as it is and no making of coefficients zero if you give lambda is equal to zero it will keep the coefficients as it is if you give lambda is equal to zero it will keep the coefficients as it is it will not make them zero that means you should not give lambda value as zero if you give lambda value as zero all the coefficients will remain as it is and none of them will be made zero that means our purpose is failed we will get the same model back if you give lambda is equal to infinity all coefficients are made zero again this is also a problem you can't give lambda as infinity because it will make all coefficients zero so the lambda value must be between zero and infinity then some of the coefficients
will be made legal. So this is the important thing you need to get. The lambda value should not be zero. The lambda value should not be infinity. It has to be a value between zero and infinity. So if you do, we will look at the uh, See, lambda into sum of absolute value of weights. This is the lasso formula. Now, if you are looking at uh, SK learn lasso, alpha, we call it as alpha is one. See here. In Python, it is called alpha. It has to be between zero and infinity. And it should be non-negative. Lambda should be non-negative, but it can be between zero to infinity. When alpha is equal to zero, you'll get the same regression model. Right? Lasso usage is not, zero is not advised. You should not use zero. You have to use something more than zero, okay? So in Python, the terminology is, in SKLearn, lambda is equal to alpha. So we call, we use the word alpha in a Python SKLearn. Okay, got it, all of you alpha, uh, lasso. The next is ridge. Ridge regression, or also called as L2 norm or L2 penalty, adds a penalty lambda or alpha to regression model object or some square of coefficients. Here it is square. In the top, it is absolute. Here it is some square of coefficients. Rich shrinks the size of coefficient coefficients to closer to zero, but not zero. It will not make the coefficients zero. It will bring the coefficient value closer to zero, but not zero. Hence, it is 
not a variable or feature selection technique it is not a variable or feature selection technique ridge regression works well with multi collinear data with multi collinear data ridge regression works really well ridge regression works well with what we call uh, multi collinear data Yes, this is the ridge regression formula. Here, yeah, weights coefficient square, coefficient square. Whereas here it is absolute value of coefficients, two straight lines. That is the difference between ridge and lasso. Elastic net is both L1 plus L2 or lasso plus bridge. So it's a first lasso will be run and on lasso output. which regression is run. Elastic net is a feature selection method. So elastic net is a combination of L1 plus L2. So if you are looking at uh, Elastic net. It is both L1 plus L2. So these are the regularization techniques. And uh, if you are looking at So this is the overfitting, underfitting. If it is a straight line, too simple to explain the variance. It should be looking like this. 
If it is like this, it is a overfitting. Too good to be true. Underfitting. This is the best fitting model. This is a. This is underfitting. Best fitting model. This is overfitting. So this is the graphs you can see for underfitting and overfitting. This is your model. Any doubts? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take a break and then afterwards we'll run those algorithms on the data. Okay, so let's break for 15 minutes, participants, and then we'll come and run these three algorithms. Guys, take a break for 15 minutes and then we'll move. You have the Kegel uh, regression model, right? Okay, advanced Kegel.
Hegel house price regression. All of you open that Kegel house price prediction where we have run all the regression models. <clears throat> hmm? huh. Either it will be like linear regression or binary logistic regression. They are regression methods, no? Yeah. Only regression. It can be within regression, a binary logistic regression. Now, logistic regression is also a regression model. Yeah, huh, but there you can't use a decision tree. Uh, I don't think we have. A... Mm, no, we can't use it. We can use it in neural networks. Lambda and alpha can be used in neural networks, but not in uh, decision tree. So if you look at your uh, SKLearn uh, so decision tree is there is no alpha or lambda. So decision tree regression Decision tree regressor. See here, mean square error, splitter, depth, max fraction, max features, minimity. So, alpha CCP underscore alpha is there, but CCP underscore alpha is not related to complexity parameter. That is related to complexity matter. So, you can use uh, penalization techniques in multiple linear regression, binary logistic regressions and neural networks. Neural networks are also regression models only, but they are sequential multi-regression models. So if you look at, uh, one second. See here, linear models, See, linear regression, okay? Linear regression, that's a different model, okay? Here you can see here. See also ridge regression, lasso and elastic net, extended versions of regressions. Similarly, logistic regression, there is logistic regression here. So in logistic regression, Penalty is there, L2. You can use it in binary logistic regression. You cannot use it in tree based models. You cannot use it in tree based models. You can use it in neural networks because neural networks are regression models only, sequential linear models. So, neural networks. Supervise multi-layer perceptron regression, MLP regressor. See here, alpha. Got it. So multiple linear regression. Uh, additional things are there. Uh, logistic regression. You can define the penalty and neural networks. You can define the alpha. So if you scroll down to alpha, see here, L2 regression, strength of the default is 0 0.0001 penalty, lambda. L2 regression term is divided by the sample size when added to the loss. Okay, so this is where you can look at. So all of the participants, please open Kekel house price prediction.
So the research model is running on. Hello. Leave the wrong day. 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 Leave the wrong So, if I answer me. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Vaishali, tell me. Hello.
Hello. I've already shared with the participants uh, the day before yesterday. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Guys, all of you, it's run. Okay, so pilot is running. So on this, we have run random forest gradient boosting and all, right? So we will run lasso first. From sklearn dot linear underscore model import lasso lasso is equal to lasso alpha is equal to zero point zero five lasso model is equal to lasso dot fit X comma Y. Lasso model dot score X comma Y. 85.43679. What was the score we got for regression? No, no, regression it was less only. Same we got, see? Then we have to increase it to 0 0.75. Okay. So 0 to infinity, na? that is making also five. Marginally changed. It is reducing, right? Alpha. Score is good. Is good. But the thing is, if you want to compare, pd dot data frame, reg model dot coefficients, comma, lasso model dot coefficients. So it didn't eliminate any coefficients, lasso. We got the same level of coefficients.
So why is the coherence are not become zero? Yeah? Why is this not doing? You know, the marginal changes are there. So we have to find correct alpha. Mm -hmm. So it's not making any of the variables zero, but this is the process of running the lasso. It is giving equal to your normal linear regression model only. Uh, 
Can use glass or CV. Then, running Lasso CV, import Lasso CV also, Lasso cross validation. So we will give a range of alphas. Alphas is equal to one E minus one comma one E minus two comma one E minus three comma one E minus four comma one E minus five comma one E minus ten comma one E minus eight one E minus nine sorry nine E minus four Seven E minus four, five E minus four, three E minus four, five E minus two, zero point one, zero point three, comma one, three, five, ten, fifteen. 18, 20, 30, 50, 75, 100, 0 0.001, comma, 0 0.005. So these are the various alphas we are giving. Okay. Model underscore CV is equal to lasso CV cross validation. Alphas is equal to alphas, comma CV is equal to 20. Model underscore CV dot fit. X comma Y. Oh, convergence warnings we got. Uh, you have to increase max underscore I two is equal to fifty thousand.
मॉडल अंडरस्कोर सीवी डॉट अल्फा हंड्रेड इज व्हाट इट इज सजेस्टिंग बेस्ट अल्फा इज हंड्रेड So, hundred is only coming. Make it five lakhs. Ah, convergence warning is coming. Hmm. No, no, warnings, we can do that, but we want to see the warning. Na? Here it is, convergence warning, objective did not converge. So it is suggesting hundred as the preferable alpha. So when we ran with one hundred alpha, we are not getting any problem. So it is going. See, some of the coefficients are zero. Now we made it, right? So we can sort it. Sort underscore index. Sort 
dot underscore index so that the assembly see It made some coefficient zero, right? So half bath heating, electrical job, garage quality and all heating. So what we do is we have given multiple alphas here. Try running this. You got this code, all of you? With multiple alphas, we did the cross validation. And we find out the best alpha. Huh? Huh, we are randomly taking these alphas. And then we are doing the cross validation and finding the best alpha.
scroll down so you will get the best alpha best alpha is 100 All right, all of you got it. So we have uh, zero values, 
सेंट्रल एयर हाफ बाथ हीटिंग इलेक्ट्रिकल गैरेज क्वालिटी बेसमेंट हाफ बाथ स्ट्रीट फेंस यूटिलिटीज आर ऑल जीरो वेरिएबल्स राइट दे इट हैज रिड्यूस द नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल्स रिड लैसो नाउ लेट अस डू रिड रिग्रेशन रिड रिग्रेशन Here also we will try to use the same alphas. What you have used in the top, okay? From S K learn dot linear underscore model import rich comma rich C V. Rich C V is the cross validation. Rich underscore C V is equal to rich C V. Alphas is equal to alphas. Alphas is equal to alphas. Comma C V is equal to twenty. That is what we given in top right. For lasso C V, we gave alpha C V right, uh, and uh, let us see what happens. Rich underscore C V dot. Oh, sorry. Rich underscore C V dot fit x comma y. So here also we have iterations issue. Let us see if we got any rich underscore C V dot alpha. It is also suggesting hundred as the best alpha. Let us say C V max iter there is no max iter question here. Hmm. So we got the rich CV again. Alpha is this. Okay. Rich is equal to rich. Alpha is equal to alpha. Rich model is equal to rich dot fit. X comma Y. Ridge model dot four X comma Y. Eighty four point eight two. PD dot data frame. Ridge model dot coefficient comma X dot columns. So it has shrink the coefficients. None of the variables are zero. See, none of the variables are zero. It has shrink the coefficients.
Okay. All of you got the reads. Now last one, elastic net. From sklearn dot linear underscore model import elastic net. E underscore net is equal to elastic net alpha is equal to 0 0.0005 comma L1 ratio is equal to 0 0.9 comma E underscore net underscore model is equal to E underscore net dot grid x comma what happened? Hmm. That you have to uh, specify what you call uh, L1 penalty, no? what you call uh, lasso, lasso penalty, lasso alphas. So we have a convergence problem. Comma max underscore fighter is equal to Not that one. Alpha Marison four, not list. Okay. Mm. Uh, it reduced 77.36. <coughs> CD dot data frame in the underscore net model of coefficients on the X dot columns. Now we have to check dot dot zero. See, some of them are zero. Land, contour, utilities, heating, central air. You can change the format. Let's stop columns, comma, e net model dot coefficients. Dot sort underscore index. Now we can see all the zeros in one place. See land contour, utility, central air, favorite drive, heating. These are the zero variables. Right? In rich, we never we didn't get anything zero. Here we got zero because this is last of place rich. This is lasso plus rich. First lasso will be run on that, it will be rich. So we will get zeros. Now you want to can try predicting on test data and upload it into Kaggle and see whether the score will improve. 
you can predict on the test data, right? And then see whether the score will improve or not. So, lasso credit is equal to lasso model dot credit house test DFP. PD dot data frame lasso credit dot two underscore CSV lasso dot CSV. Okay. So Hackathon or stress prediction lasso dot CSV. Open with Excel. Sample submission open with Excel. Control C. Control V. Control S. So if you go to Kegel, Submit prediction. So we go last on most best prediction sample submission. Last. Zero point one six eight eight zero. Very high. So you can submit and check. Which three the techniques? Uh -huh. I didn't get you. No, no, overfitting and underfitting. See, feature selection methods. Tree based models are used in feature selection methods. So you can use them to select variables. Okay, so when underfitting is happening, you have to reduce the variable, right? Then you can use variable selection methods. Lasso is one, where some variables are eliminated. Similarly, if you see our uh, Kegel house price, PD dot data frame, Three model dot coefficients what is the name I given to decision tree model here.
Yeah, three models only we have given. Three model dot coefficients comma x dot sorry. <laughs> Three model dot get underscore future importance. Why we are not getting three model dot future importances? Yeah, future importances, comma x dot columns. Okay, sort, sort, Okay, dot dot underscore index. See zeros. And these are also zeros only, right? They are also zeros. See, you will only select variables. I will start selecting variables. From here, one person, right? The rest of the variables you can eliminate because they're very less. So, this is how you can see uh, feature importances for decision tree. Okay. Hmm? 
Thank <laughs> you. 